Hey you guys, Joey here, welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. And as you can see, we are in a different kind of setting. We are in my bedroom, where I think I'll probably be doing videos from now on. If you guys like the kind of change of scenery, let me know in the comments down below. But, um, I really wanted to do a different kind of scene, really, for these videos. I also said that I wanted to show you guys. Now, as you can read by the title, we're going to be talking about the Adam... Walsh case. This case really like it messes with my mind because this could have been prevented in so many ways. It could have and literally if a lot of people were on top of their jobs this really could have honestly never happened. And so now without further ado let's get on into today's video. Adam John Walsh was born on November 14, 1974 in Hollywood, Florida to his parents, John and Rebe Walsh. Now, everyone who's ever come in contact with Adam says that he had such a bright and bubbly personality. He was so energetic and really the life of a party, really. But his parents have also said that he was sometimes kind of shy towards people that he didn't really know, which I feel like is like any kind of little kid, you know, they're comfortable with who they're comfortable with. This case really changed a lot due to how big it got and really, it really triggered for better police work because the way this case was handled was so, so sloppy. Now, you probably do or you probably don't know Adam's father, John Walsh, but after this case, he really became an advocate for missing children and victims of such crimes like these. And also later in 1988, became the host of a popular television show, America's Most Wanted, which focused on really bringing criminals to justice. Now, people were so freaked out by this case because the way it happened can literally happen to anyone at any time and really a split second. And that was the case for Adam Walsh and John and Rebe. On July 27, 1981, Adam Walsh was abducted at a Sears department store parking lot in Hollywood, Florida at the age of six years old. That day was kind of a normal, regular day and Rebe decided to take Adam with her to the mall and they went to the Sears department store. Now, Rave went there with the intentions on getting a lamp, and so she was just looking around, but, you know, Adam, only being a kid, he didn't want to look for lamps. He wanted to play the games a few aisles down. Renee didn't really see a problem with this, really due to the fact that she would only be a few minutes, a few aisles down, so she wouldn't be away from Adam for very long. And little did Rave know was that it would be the last time she saw her son. When Rave returned from looking at lamps a few aisles down below, Adam was nowhere to be found. Now, there were these boys that were also with Adam, um, and they were all taking turns playing the video game at the kiosk a few aisles down. And now, now somewhere along the way, there was a conflict between the boys about whose turn it was, and they, an employee said that they were causing a disruption in the store and asked them to leave. Yes, he asked a six-year-old and a group of boys to leave the store by themselves. Now, this is what I mean when I say this could have been prevented. If the employee would have asked the kid to wait for their parents or something, this probably would have never happened, at least not to Adam. It's been said that Adam probably stayed quiet due to how shy he was, and so the employee really assumed that Adam was with the other boy. Now, when Renee this was saw that Adam wasn't where she had left him, she ran to an employee to ask if where the boys had gone, and the employee directed her to customer service. This is when the employee told her the boys were creating a disturbance, they were arguing, whatever, whatever, and we told them to leave. So now, Renee, 
just like any other parent would, completely freaked out and went on a complete frenzy and ran outside to look for Adam. And when she didn't, this is when she realized that Adam was not outside and she didn't see him. He was nowhere to be found outside. So she ran and she completely tore the entire store upside down, aisle through aisle, thoroughly looking for her son, asking anyone she could for information about where he possibly could have gone. Ron had thought that they had been escorted with the boys, but Adam was left alone in the parking lot because Ravay says that it seemed as if the boys knew each other because they were kind of close, so they thought that they were escorted out, but like they left and Adam was just there alone by himself. This made Ravay worry even more because her shy six-year-old son was left alone at a parking lot full of strangers. Perfect decision making, don't you think? By these by these employees. It was just so weird and bizarre because it was the middle of a Monday afternoon and no one, not a single soul, saw anything happen to Adam. Adam's parents were so determined on bringing him home that they put out a one hundred thousand dollar reward to for the safety of their son and for him to be brought back home safely. And they also did numerous things for the media and trying to bring awareness and let everyone know that their son was missing. His parents would not stop until he was back home safely, but sadly, two weeks after Adam's disappearance, on October 10th, a floating severed head was discovered in the water at the Florida Canal, nearly 130 miles from where Adam was abducted. So. Yeah, Adam was taken quite far. To make things even more bizarre, the rest of Adam's body was never discovered, and it was ruled that Adam's death was of asphyxiation, and also that Adam had died several days prior to his head being discovered. This is when the police really began to look at every and everyone, and even his parents were looked at as potential suspects in Adam's death. And the lack of evidence really made this much harder for police. And also, because there was hardly really any evidence, police began to question whether Adam was abducted by a stranger. The police kept on investigating and they couldn't get anything until a man named Otis Toole entered the equation. Now, before we go any further into this video, I just would like to stop this video and let you guys know that if you don't like to hear gore or things like that, things of that nature, you should probably click off of this video um, because we're about to take a journey. Otis Tool was born on March 5th, 1947 in Jacksonville, Florida and Otis didn't really have a good childhood growing up. It stated that he was a victim of sexual assault and incest and also his father was an alcoholic who abandoned him and his mom wasn't really all that great either as she was an alcoholic and abusive and she always dressed him up in girl clothing. Otis was a well-known serial killer who went all around the coast of Florida with his literal partner in crime Henry Lee Lucas and together they murdered almost over a hundred people. In April 1983, Otis was arrested for an unrelated arson incident and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. A few months later, his friend that he had committed the murders with, Henry Lee Lucas, was arrested for unlawful possession of a firearm. And now, this is where it gets kind of weird. Lucas began to tell everyone about how he and Otis, how they were like, this and they committed all of these murders and that is when Otis pretended he didn't know who Henry Lee Lucas was. He denied everything until eventually he finally decided to say yeah I know him we did this and we did that and later he told them he did know Lucas and backed up everything Lucas was saying even about them committing all of those murders. In April of 1984 a jury found Otis to guilty for the murder of George Steinberg and was sentenced to death. 
Later, and also in 1984, Otis was also found guilty for the strangulation of a 19 year old woman and was also sentenced to death. So he had two death sentences. But both of Otis's death sentences were changed to life in prison. Now this is where things really get confusing and this is where it kind of takes a turn. So while Otis was in prison, he said that he wanted to speak to a detective to confess something that he had done. Now when he spoke to this detective, he told them that he had murdered a little boy he saw outside of a Sears department store. Otis went into great detail really about the events that had occurred and it kind of stunned the police that he had so much detail which kind of made them think that he did do it because he had lots of detail. He, Otis, said that he had lured Adam to his, it was said that it was a white 1971 Cadillac or something like that and he lured Adam to his car with you know toys and candies and really without hesitation Adam walked towards his car that's when Otis said he saw the opportunity snatched Adam Walsh and drove away now Otis who I previously said was from Jacksonville Florida said that that was where he was taking Adam and the drive from Hollywood Florida to Jacksonville Florida is about four hours and um, Otis said that about halfway through the ride is when Adam started to complain about how he wanted his mom and he wanted to go back home. And now this really kind of angered Otis and he punched Adam in the face. Because punching him in the face only makes him cry more, Adam began to cry more and Otis punched him in the face several more times until Adam was unconscious. Now, when he realized Adam was unconscious, he decided to drive and pull over, strangle Adam with a seatbelt, and cut off his head with a machete. Adam's head was left in Otis's car for, I think, about a few weeks, and Otis had forgotten it was there until he was driving, saw it, and that's when he threw it in the Florida. Otis even took it a step further, I know, how could he? by sending a letter to Adam's father, John, going into full detail about how he abducted Adam, what he did, and how he did it. Later on in 1994, Otis then recanted his statement saying that he never murdered Adam Walsh. Now this kind of sent the police into a frenzy, really, and really, they had no hardcore evidence, only the confession that Otis had made which made their jobs incredibly difficult. The car that Otis had Adam in, it had been sold so many times and it eventually went to the junkyard and could not be found. Neither could the machete that Otis said he decapitated Adam with. Adam's father, John, was very upset because it was a rug in the backseat of the car and if Otis decapitated Adam in the backseat of the car like he said he did, that blood on that carpet in the back of his car could have been the crucial evidence that they really needed to put Otis, to pin this crime on Otis. Adam's father was so upset that such a master key and important part of this whole entire investigation was lost just like that. The rug was being transported and it got lost along the way somehow and that really made Adam's father upset. It's just like, it's just crazy honestly but two years later on September 15th 1996 Otis Toole died at the age of 49 from cirrhosis at the Florida State Prison years later they were forced to release the files on Adams case and there were over 10,000 pages of notes on Adams case and this and when it was turned over it showed that there were so many mistakes that the police had made when handling Adam's case. And now enters the cold case group. The cold case group were a group of people who handled cold cases. When they were looking into the case during their investigation, they found that a file folder designed to contain documents, children's shorts and slippers were found buried 
in Otis's mom's backyard. Adam's dad was also really upset that they never really put that together and that it could have belonged to him. But later, however, when it was tested, it was shown that it did not belong to Adam. Now, I just want to throw a quick note in here, like a little sidebar. No, um, Jeffrey Dahmer was a suspect in this case because people were saying that they saw him on that day, they saw him around there, they thought they saw him, whatever, whatever. And so the police really did look into Jeffrey Dahmer. When Jeffrey Dahmer was asked about Walsh's case, he said, and I quote, I've told you who I killed, how I killed them, and who I eat. Why would I tell you? Why wouldn't I tell you if I just killed one more? And that kind of sends that kind of sends like shivers and chills down my spine. Like who I ate. Like I don't know. That just kind of really like messes me up. Like I don't. That just kind of like uh. Adam's father, John, believed that Dahmer didn't have anything to do with this case, and still did believe that. <laughs> But uh, Adam's father, John, believed that Jeffrey Dahmer didn't have anything to do with this case and he still believed that Otis was the one responsible for his son's death. And also really to this day, no one really knows specifically what happened to Adam. On December 16th, 2008, the case was officially declared closed with John and Reve being satisfied saying Otis Tool was their son, Adam's. Um, lots of laws and organizations were also made and created in Adam's memory. Those being the Code Adam program, the Children's Assistance Act, and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. And this case is just really messes with me because this could have been prevented. Like, it just could have been prevented if the police were doing better in the investigation. Um, the employee never told the kids to go outside by themselves without their parents um, And I just feel like it just all could have just been Avoided and changed at least to Adam um, And this just really messes with me. It really just I don't know. It just makes my stomach turn But I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching today's video if you guys did enjoy yourselves here and have any kind of suggestions on other cases you guys would like me to talk about and discuss, leave them down in the comment section down below. You can also follow me on my social medias, which should be down in the description box below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, let me know what you think of my new room. Let me know if you think Otis was the one who killed Adam. Let me know what you think the police could have done differently. Just leave all your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next one.